More now on Donald Trump's legal reckoning and his reprehensible words. The Manhattan grand jury is home for the weekend. The Manhattan DA brings them back on Monday. But Donald Trump is not waiting. A week of attacks on prosecutor Alvin Bragg crossed into reckless incitement after midnight. Look at this. It's an early morning Truth Social post from the former president insisting any charge in the hush money case could unleash, quote, death and destruction. With me in studio to share their reporting and their insights, CNN's Lauren Fox, Nolan Kano Youngs of the New York Times, and NPR's Tamara Keith. Um, death could unleash death and destruction. Catastrophic for our country. He should know better. This, uh, it's now been two, three years where we've had uh, law enforcement agencies across the gamut have been warning about the risk of political violence and how some of the claims from public officials, false claims, continue to motivate some of that political violence and make that threat more severe. Um, we saw similar chatter ahead of January 6 online as well. This is blatant forecasting of potential violence here. And we've learned through the past couple of years that there's consequences to this as well. Right. And so let me just interrupt at that point, just to bring into the conversation. Look, Donald Trump's not going to listen to Hakeem Jeffries. He's the top Democrat in the House of Representatives now. But you're going to, you will get a chance to listen to Hakeem Jeffries here. And guess what? Uh, most Republicans won't say this publicly. Privately, they'll tell you they agree with just about every word of this. Well, the twice impeached form of president's rhetoric uh, is reckless, reprehensible, and irresponsible. It's dangerous. And if he keeps it up, he's going to get someone killed. We've already seen the consequences of incitement from the former president. And the former president is an active candidate for president at the moment. Right. And he has proven this week by putting out a message on Truth Social saying he was going to be arrested and then drawing the media and everyone else to talk about him nonstop all week long that as a candidate for president and as a public figure, he can draw people, draw attention to himself. And then what he does with that attention is uh, send out on Truth Social uh, racist and anti-Semitic tropes um, and other dog whistles uh, about the prosecutor and, mm. and about the case. Mm. Um, and then he said he's not threatening violence. He's saying there will be violence. Right, and, and that's, he tries to skate around it. We could show you some other emails he sent this week, and some of them I just think, you know, this, he thinks this is helping him. Uh, emails about, you know, other sex scandals and other court cases and other things like that. He's entitled to do this if he wants. It's a free country. But the idea, anyway, anyway, that a former president of the United States would be talking about catastrophic death, destruction, but that the same president, the same president who sent a mob to the Capitol on January 6th, and yet, and yet, we listen from Hakeem Jeffries, um, a few Republicans have said, you know, things need to be peaceful, but you don't hear the swift condemnation. Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the question marks is if the Republican Senate was in session today, would there be a swifter and more robust reaction to Donald Trump from someone like Mitch McConnell or John Thune? Perhaps there could be, you know, keep in mind that the House Republicans are the ones on Capitol Hill today. That is probably his most loyal group of supporters, and even they're not that loyal to Donald Trump at this point. But it's really remarkable given the fact that the January 6th committee, they spent a year plus proving the point that Donald Trump's rhetoric and his message, what he was telling his supporters, had a direct impact on what happened at the Capitol on January 6th. And so it, it is really remarkable to sort of be seeing this playing out once again. Right. Well, and, and there are trials underway right now for people who stormed the Capitol. There are people yeah. who have gotten, uh, you know, sentencing just today. So this is this is an ongoing live issue from January 6th that now new supporters are being told sent a signal. Right. And it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how not only you're right, the Congress, it's Friday, so you don't have people moving about on Capitol Hill, but the other candidates for the Republican nomination as well. This happened after midnight last night. Where were they willing to go? Because Trump is trying to bully them into bullying the prosecutor, if you will. But we'll watch as it plays out.